Can't find an antenna to suit your needs? Maybe you need a Frank antenna as well. Stick around and we'll get right to it. Now, if you guys have been around the channel very much at all, you will know that I am a huge fan of the InFed Halfwave antenna. It's super easy to set up. It gives me multiple bands, 10, 10 15, 20, and 40 meters with uh, relatively low SWR. And it's just one of my favorite portable antennas. However, I ran into a couple of situations last year when we were out in the RV where I just didn't quite have enough room to set this guy up. So I started looking at alternatives that I could use to try to solve those situations where I just don't have enough room to get the infed half wave up into the air. Last August, I had picked up this little clamp device uh, when we were in Huntsville, and I wasn't really sure what I was going to do with it at the time, but I knew that I was going to use this somehow to create an antenna. It was a month or so later, I was talking to my friend Bob at TN07, when he suggested one of these MFJ telescoping uh, whips to use, and I kind of liked that idea in the beginning, but it was a little bit limiting. I was going to lose 40 meters. Now, I was going to pick up a couple of other bands, but I was going to lose 40 meters, and I work a lot of 40 meter contacts uh, when we're out and about. I do a lot of wind link connections on 40 meters, so I really didn't want to lose 40 meters. Then, we're at Hamcation uh, this past February, and I happened to stop by the Wolf River Coils booth. And I knew they had come out with this little sporty 40, but I thought you was going to have to buy it as a kit. When I found out you could get this little device for just 30 bucks, well, hey, take my money. So now I've got with the uh, sporty 40, the MFJ whip, and that little clamp that I bought, I've got basically six meters all the way through 40 meters, which in my opinion, is going to give me a great antenna. So I kind of cobbled this together. You can buy these kits from Wolf River Coil, but I kind of cobbled this one together on my own. But then I got to thinking, can we go a step further? The downside to using a whip is we get a lower angle of takeoff when we're working HF. What if I wanted to work NVIS? Could I take this same setup, if this is all I had with me, and make an NVIS antenna out of it as well? So I got to doing some experimenting, pardon the noise there, and I went ahead and built a couple of lengths of wire. It's actually one length of wire, but it has a break in the middle of it where I can put that together or take it apart. I put a couple of ring terminals on the end of the wire and then I found a bolt uh, in my junk drawer that would fit into the 3 8 by 24 threads in this. I believe those are 3 8 by 24. So anyway, I can just put these couple of washers right here. One of them is just for strain relief and the other one actually gives me the electrical connection. But these will screw right into the top of the Sporty 40. Now the reason I wanted the Sporty 40 in the mix is it does shorten this length of wire overall. Not super critical when you're working 40 meters, but I decided if we were going to do this, we might as well get 80 meters out as well. So this is going to give me, this particular setup will now give me 40 meter and 80 meter NVIS communications. So give me a couple of minutes to get this set up and let's test this 40 meter NVIS communication and see if we can get a Winlink connection. Okay, so I'm not entirely sure that the display is going to show up on camera out here in the bright sun, but I am using KB5LZK uh, for my connection attempt. That station is located in Arkansas, I believe about 500 kilometers away. I'll have to look that up and put it on the screen here. But let's go ahead and try to make a connection. We're only running 5 watts with the uh, ICOM 705, and let's just see if we can get a connection. I'm going to move back over to the VARA screen so I can watch it, and let's see what happens. Should be able to hear my signal going out.
and there's another station right beside us but we haven't made the connection yet SWR looks good on it and that looks like we are connected. The noise level here is negative 4 dB is what I'm hearing the other station at. So it looks like this connection is going to be successful and go through. Okay, so now I have taken the Sporty 40 out of the equation. I'm just running the stainless steel whip and we're on 20 meters. Let's see if we can make a connection over to N5TW with just 5 watts and that station is located over in Texas. It looks like we have connected and our signal to noise ratio this time is exactly 0 dB. So we should have no trouble with this connection going through as well. So what's my opinion on this setup? Well, hey, hold up. We can't do a wrap up just yet. We haven't tested the 80 meter link. Let's give that a quick test real quick with another wind link session. Let's go ahead and jump over to the Pat mailbox and we'll try WW4MSK which I believe, let's see, let's take a quick peek here, 339 kilometers away from me. So let's go ahead and see if we can make a quick connection there. We'll hit the connect button and let's see what we get. And it looks like that connection is going to come through as well. Now, a little bit uh, down in the mud there. I'm looking at between 13 and 16, negative 13 and negative 16 dB. But we are making a connection. The one thing I'm a little bit, a little bit disappointed with right here. Let's see if we can see that when it keys up. You can see that we're showing about a 2 to 1 SWR. So SWR could be a little bit lower, but I'm pretty low in the band as well trying to make this connection. But it does look like it's going to work for 80 meters. So what's my opinion on the setup? Well, it's got some pros and it's got some cons. First of all, it looks like the 20 meter version uh, with just the stainless steel whip or all the way down to 6 meters uh, will work excellent. Also, the Sporty 40 seems to be a winner. That NVIS uh, experiment that I ran, well, I need to do some more testing to see if it's really going to perform better or not because I would have honestly expected a better um, noise ratio when I made the connection, the wind link connection on 40 meters. So I'll have to test that a little bit more. Maybe we can uh, play with the 40 meter NVIS and the 80 meter NVIS on field day when it rolls around and give it a really good field test to see how it works. But the main reason I built this was for those uh, times when I just didn't have enough real estate available to me to put up the in-fed half wave. Uh, the downside to it is now if I want to change bands, let's say I want to drop from uh, 40 meters down to 20 meters or from 20 down to 15, well, I've got to go outside and make adjustments to the antenna. So it's not near as convenient as the infed half wave. So the infed half wave will definitely remain my go-to antenna for the vast majority of deployments. But when I do run into one of those situations where I just don't have enough real estate to get that 40 meter infed half wave up in the air, this is going to be a great alternative. I'm not really worried about it being a little uh, more weight or a little bit of a bulkier system. This is strictly going to live in the RV, so uh, weight and size is not as big of a factor as if I'm trying to fit it into a backpack uh, or maybe take it onto an airplane or shove it into the car going out to the park or whatever. So uh, weight, and, weight and size is not as big of a concern in this particular case. Guys, if you found today's information helpful, be sure to leave us a thumbs up before you head off. We will see you on the next one. Until then, 7-3.